Hello everybody and welcome to tonight's Facebook Live. We are right here tonight focusing on exports and I wanted to take you on a little bit of a different journey this evening. Uh, particularly the reason that I wanted to do that is we have got uh, more information now on the, um, on the project, the research project that you're going to have to be focusing on, um, particularly for those of you in Leaving Cert. And of course, uh, the thing is the that I want to help you to uh, achieve the best that you possibly can get with that. So tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it through not just uh, a spotlight on exports, like I've said, but I'm actually going to take you through the research process in order for you to be able to find out the information. And as before, I've been telling you where to find it. Now I'm going to take you through from the very beginning how to find it, but also how to analyze it. Now. The reason that I've opened up this page here is that if you click on the blog and I'm just going to close this down here. If I click on the blog, I just wanted to take you through, obviously, um, for those of you who are familiar with this, uh, you will know exactly what's here. But just before we get into the export side of things over here, um, you can see that we've got a range of individual news stories that are happening. And that is just if any of you want to, you know, just get a quick check in on what's important in the in the economy broadly. So we've got the coronavirus, uh, which is affecting a variety of things, of course, most importantly, people's health, but also it's having a knock on effect on the environment or uh, not, sorry, not just the environment, but the economy. Uh, and then we have got a range of other things like um, what's going on in the US. Uh, we have from um, the Wall Street Journal, uh, we also have different sectoral in headlines and so on. But in addition, I wanted to bring you down here to say, if you scroll down a little bit, you will also have the uh, the Facebook Live recordings and the associated resources. So for example, I delivered one on housing uh, last month and I delivered one on uh, Brexit the month before. Uh, I also wrote some pieces as well just about um, Couple of, couple of different points around foreign exchange and a couple of other things that are in the syllabus. But particularly, I wanted to let you know that previous sessions, they're all here. OK, so all you need to do is just click here, for example, I'm going to go here to this one, for example, on housing. And then within here, uh, you will see all of the information, um, all of the resources and the links and everything else, as well as the recording of the video itself. OK. So just wanted to let you know, all of that's there. <clears throat> all of that is there as a resource for you. And you can check in on that at, a, at any stage. The other thing I wanted to let you know is that on the, just going to go over here, on the Facebook page itself, uh, when I click here on the Facebook page itself, uh, if you like the page, okay, so if you click here on like, you will then automatically see any posts that are up there. And of course, particularly the events. So the next month's Facebook Live is going to be about the gender pay gap. It's one of the issues that comes up uh, again and again. Um, it comes up again and again, I have to say, in the syllabus in various different ways, whether it's the SDGs, which are the Sustainable Development Goals, or whether it comes in under Chapter 3, which is all about uh, equality and social issues and the stakeholders within the economy and so on. So um, so you can see here that one is going to take place on the 25th of March. But uh, if you simply like the page, <clears throat> excuse me, if you simply like the page, then you will get the updates uh, as well. OK, so just wanted to let you know all of the previous ones are all in positive economics .ie, OK, positive economics .ie. And of all the future ones are going to be on the Positive Economist Facebook page. So if you click like, then you will, uh, you'll be able to be notified for those. Okay, so moving on. Tonight, I wanted to take it through exports and uh, there is so much we could talk about within exports, but within the syllabus, we have two key things to look at. Okay, what we want to look at are the changes in exports and who our trading partners are and what we're exporting as a nation. But then the other thing that we want to talk about as well is balance payments. So how does the way in which Ireland interacts with the world on a financial basis? Is money coming into the country? Is money leaving the country when you take into consideration exports and otherwise? Okay. So, so as I mentioned, when you're looking at the project, the project is going to be worth 20% of your overall leaving start mark. Okay. 
So when we take into consideration what is being looked for there, um, we have got some, uh, us three authors, uh, Brian O'Connor, Trudy Murray and myself. We have now got some notification around what's going to be involved. So I want to help you now every single time that you tune into a video like this, I want to take you through some element of the process to help you prepare for that project. So then when it comes to you working on this, um, and you'll only be starting on this, by the way, in September, but the reason I'm doing starting this now is that when you look back on the recordings of these videos, uh, you'll be able to go through the, the research process because that is going to be a key part of your overall result in the project, which of course feeds into the overall result for the Living Cert. So, um, right, when we think of exports, um, when you're researching anything, right, and this, this is the same for you doing a Living Cert research project or me preparing for a brief for a client, okay, very same, is the first thing we need to ask is what do we want to know? Like when we talk about exports, what really do we want to know? Okay, so what I do generally is that I set up an Excel spreadsheet with those with the questions that I that I want to know. Right. So when it comes to exports, here are the three things that I would like to know. So I would like to know when it comes to exports, and I'm going to add in imports. I'll spend more time on exports, by the way, but uh, because the reason I'll spend less time on imports is to analyze them is the very same process. Three key questions I would like to know. First of all, have they increased? year slash o slash y okay now in every case of when you're working with me which you all are right now digitally whether you're live right now or whether you are tuning in and looking at this after that i've recorded it, okay so every time that you work with me i want to make sure that you understand exactly all the acronyms and acronyms are things like these right where you don't write out the word so what i'm going to do is over here I'm just going to write down Y O Y Y O Y uh, means year over year. In other words, if I'm compare if I'm comparing one year in comparison to another. So what I'd like to know is about exports. Have they increased year over year? And I would like to ask that of exports, imports, and the whether it's a surplus, surplus, or uh, deficit. Now, if you don't know what that word means yet, don't worry, I'll explain it to you in a little while, okay? So, here's what I want to know. Have the exports and imports, have they increased year over year? Uh, so, have they increased year over year? And I want to ask that question of exports, imports, and surplus or deficit. Now, the next question I would like to ask is where, right? So, where are we exporting to and importing from? And specifically, I want to know a couple of things within that. I want to know what is our largest export country partner, country partner. I want to know my largest export country, country in terms of growth, growth. Okay. And largest export country partner, I'm going to say in terms of amount, in terms of amount. Now, the answers to these questions are important, but what's also important is the actual amount of information that's available to me, because maybe I won't be able to find this very easily. So, and, and you won't know that. When you're at the start of a process like this, you are not going, going to know that at all. So it's going to be important for you to be able to figure out the information that's available to you, but also it's important to figure out what, what you can get. And, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do both, okay? So, all right, so let's move on then. I would also like to know the largest, I'm basically going to copy and paste these, right? Largest import country. Import, I-M-P-O-R-T, okay, and same. And the same here. So I also want to look at the largest import country in terms of growth also. Right, now that we have done both of those, now let's see how we get on. Um, so this is my second key question. And my third question, the third thing that I'm looking for is I would like to know uh, what, okay? So what are we exporting? What are we exporting? 
So when I say what, I mean, what are the largest sectors? Another word for sector is an industry. So what are we exporting? And what, again, I want to know the largest change. So I want to know the largest category that we're exporting and the largest change in category. So I'm going to document that. Okay, so largest, largest category, category uh, in terms of amount. And I also want to know the largest category in terms of change, change as well. I'd, I'd also like to know that too. Okay, so um, right now that we have done that, uh, I'm pretty, pretty, you know, I'm pretty happy now that I that I know what I want to look for, and this makes the research process so much easier. Now, when you're when you're a like real time economist, like when you're actually an economist where you're working with a client, so I'm just going to give you an example of some of the things that I'm working on right now. Okay, so uh, right now I am working on um, a brief around the economics of wellness in the workplace, for example, and that is that is what we would call microeconomics. The reason I'm saying that is companies are interested in, in what they can do for staff that will make a difference to their productivity and to their overall happiness. So that's not, well, how do we make Ireland more export ready or how do we grow the number of businesses in Ireland? Instead, that is something on a micro basis. So that's one thing that I'm working on. Another thing that I'm working on is the way in which women invest in comparison to men. And that is uh, forming part of International Women's Day. So I'm working on that for a client as well. And then uh, what I just finished up on uh, was another project that I was working on for a client whereby uh, I was in New Zealand three weeks ago and I my job there was to work with a range of different organisations who work with different bodies in Ireland. And the objective of that was to figure out how we can build the trade and other relationships between Ireland and New Zealand. And in all of those require research and all of those require exactly what I'm doing with you right here. That's, that's precisely what, what I have to do is I have to start off by asking, what exactly do I want to know? In some cases, the client doesn't know. The client doesn't actually know what questions to ask. What they want is a report or they want an output. So in your case, the client, if you want to call it that, is the leaving cert. And uh, in your case, when it comes to your research project, what you will be given is you will be given a list of topics by, um, by the government and uh, you will have to choose what you have to build uh, your uh, research report around it. So you will, do, you will follow this exact process. Now, before anything happens to this information, let me quickly save it, right? So what's really important when you're putting something together is to save things as you go along. So I'm just going to go up here to, I'm just going to save this here and let me put this in here. So I'm just going to put this for export data uh, research project. All right. Now, of course, the next thing is why, where am I going to get this information? So over here on the right hand side, I'm going to put anything that is an acronym or any term that I've come across and um, that needs an explanation. If you hear me saying anything that you don't understand, please do comment. Please do comment, let me know, and I will make sure to, to document things then uh, as we go along for you. That's, that's of course, what, what it's all about, okay? All right, now, um, first of all, where do, are we going to get our information about have they increased year over year? Now, what I haven't specified here is which year. So I don't know how much, as I mentioned, I don't know what data is actually gonna be available to me. So in order to be able to answer this question, let me now go and find some data and put some numbers in here. Right, so for a start, I'm going to go on to the CSO website. It is the central statistics office, and therefore it is also my central port of call. Often, if I'm researching anything to do with the Irish macro economy, I will start here. And if I scroll down, let me take a look here to see what, what's jumping up at me. Hmm, I see the goods, exports and imports, and these are for December 2019. Now, the thing is, we all know that exports, when you take into consideration all of exports, it's not just goods, but services as well. So let's start off with goods exports, right? So I'm going to click here. And in here, there's the answer to my first question. Is January to December in 2018, I can see the change of my exports, I can see the change of my imports, and I can see they're in a surplus and I can see the change in my surplus. 
So let me now take this information and, and let me answer it according to the questions that I set out to, to ask myself. So first of all, have exports increased, uh, or uh, sorry, have they changed year over year? Yes, they have. These numbers are not identical. And uh, specifically, they've, uh, my exports are up 8.5%. So I'm going to go back and put that number in. So have they increased year over year? Yes, this has by 8.5%. Now, Excel is an absolutely brilliant product, but you have to know how to use it and how to use it quickly. So I'm going to put in here that this is a percentage. And look what happens. Look what happens is automatically this changes into 850%, which isn't correct, of course. So if I now put in 8.5 after I formatted it, now look what happens. It now jumps to where it's rounded up. Again, that's not good enough. So I want to click this and there we go. So part of what you're going to have to learn how to do is format information within Excel so that you can use the information quickly, but also accurately. Because it's not accurate to say that exports increased in Ireland, I'm going to say 2019, in 2019. Um, remember, this is year over year. So I know it's now implicit that if I'm looking at the 2019 figures, that this is year over year, that this is up in the whole, in the whole year. I know that this is comparing to 2018. Okay, so next one. Um, have they increased year over year in terms of my uh, in terms of my my imports? Well, actually, my imports actually fell by three percent. So Ireland imported less in 2019 than it imported in 2018. So let me go over there, and I'm going to go. So I'm going to put in here. Uh, now I'm not going to make the same mistake here. I'm going to format it. And I'm going to um, add on my decimal point. Okay, now what I'm going to say is minus three. And there you go, minus 3.0% is, is in here. And then the last thing, am I in a surplus or a deficit? Now I'm going to delete a uh, surplus, or I'm going to delete a uh, deficit. I just want to have that it's a surplus. And I'm going to also delete uh, my question mark because of course I've now answered my question. So my surplus actually changed to, it's up 30%, which is huge. Again, I'm going to do the same thing and the same thing here, up 30%. Now, to be up 30% is a huge amount. So, of course, the natural. Now, the inquisitive economist then says, why? Like, why, why, why is it that our exports are rising? And why is it that our imports are falling? And, and what's driving this? Okay. Now, depending on the level of detail that you might want in your project, what I might put in here now are, I'm just going to put in the amounts for 2019. I'm going to put them in so that I have a record of them. The one thing you don't want to keep doing is keep going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards getting information. So I'm just going to copy and paste these quickly. So my exports for 2019 are right here. Okay. And my imports for 2019 are here. And so you can see here, I'm doing this really quickly because I have it all set up. And finally, my surplus is 63 billion euro. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to format paint right here. So I have the same font and it's important that I have my, um, my unit. So I'm going to euro and M for million. I'm just going to put in million actually. So I don't be remembering anything. And the last thing I'm going to do is format this in Excel to change this to euro. Okay, now we're good to go, right? I don't need these extra decimal points. So I'm going to take those out. Okay, now here we go. Good to go. I have my information. So now let's move on, right? Let's move on now to our second question. That is, where are we exporting to and importing from? Um, so I think this is, personally, I find this really interesting. And I'll tell you why, is the answers to these questions inform so many things, right? So, so, so many things. The, the reason that there was such a big deal about Brexit in Ireland for the past four years is the fact that we export so much to the UK. And it's not just that we export to the UK, it's what we export to the UK. So I want to show you briefly, all right, do you know what's really fantastic on the CSO website? I'm just gonna bring it up to you here, are the visualization tools, right? But what I wanted to show you, there's, there's, there's a couple that I wanted to show you in particular. Um, one, uh, just going to, um, now, how do we move that on? Uh, let me go back again. Uh, because uh, what you can find here, yeah, yeah, 
this is what I'm looking for. Right, let me go down. Yes, this one. What was it? Yeah, this one. So here in the case of Brexit, you can see Ireland and the UK in the numbers, but particularly if we look at the one that we're talking about tonight, look at trade in goods. And what you can see here is that when it came to our goods, 1.9 billion, so 23, like almost a quarter of our goods uh, when it came to imports uh, in 2019 came in from the UK, right? Uh, and I can download that, by the way, if, if, if I was downloading this to put into my research report, you can see here that I don't have to be copying and pasting anything. I can download them here uh, very easily. So you can see how our trade in good has risen uh, over time. But also when you look at our exports, now it's interesting the fact that we actually, we now export 10%, um, 10 10% of our goods go to the UK uh, in comparison to the rest of the world. So over here, you see, this is why, this is, this is what really caused a lot of a lot of trouble and will continue to by the way is that what about these companies who are selling here now what you don't know right what, what you don't know what you can't tell from here what i can tell you from all the work i've done around brexit is who are those companies that are exporting that 10 percent? a lot of them are small businesses and it's not easy for a small business to start exporting into another country you can't just you know create a sales team in france or america or argentina or australia um in fact, I just picked three countries there that began with A. That was totally accidental. But the point here is that it's not easy to do this. So that actually can have quite a difficult, that, 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 that can be quite a difficult thing to do. So, you know, that's why answering the question about where do we trade into is what's really important. Um, similarly, when we get on to, to services, I'll, I'll do the same there. But there's a huge, huge amount of interaction between Ireland and the UK. And if there was any, any trade barriers or anything that you study within that chapter around protectionism, anything like that, or even, not even protectionism, but simply a change in the exchange rate, like I wrote about in an article for you earlier on in the year, all sorts of things like that. They all matter. They all really, really, really matter. So that's why all of these things um, are, are of su such interest. So let, let's let's go back to our let's go back to our, our question here. Right? So our question is, who where are we exporting to? So let's think geography, right? Who is the largest export country partner, and who is the which country have we grown the most in in the past year, right? Let's go and find out. So first of all, I'm going to scroll down, here and I'm going to keep on scrolling. And I'm going to keep on scrolling and I'm going to keep on scrolling. And all of these are, um, all of these relate to what, but here's who, right? So this is interesting now is that specifically when it comes to the UK, well, no, Great Britain. And, and let me specify what that is. So England is England, right? It's, it's the country England. Britain is, our, is England and Wales. Great Britain is Scotland, England and Wales. So this is the island of Great Britain. This does not include Northern Ireland. So exports to Great Britain in 2019 were 13 billion, which is a decrease. So it's down, they're down minus 4% uh, compared to 2018. So that's telling us that exports into the UK have fallen. Now, what I don't know, what I don't know is whether we exported less or because of the exchange rate, we actually got less money as a result. Now, if you, if you can't quite remember what I'm talking about there, don't understand me. That's okay. That's okay. I have a blog post to explain all that. And where that is, is the, I'm just going to go back here and just mention it. So when I scroll down here, I'm just going to close it again. If I scroll down here, uh, I am going to refer to it right here. Uh, how much does it cost to change money from euro to another currency? So here is where you can uh, you can read all about it here, for example, um, and that's where you can talk. Uh, that's where we talk about how much it costs to change to, to change currency and so on like that. Okay, so um, that is all. Uh, that's yeah. That's that's all back there in the positive economics blog. Right now, it also says imports from Great Britain were were what they were. Now we actually increased our imports again. I don't know whether that's because we bought more, or due to a change in currency. Um, and it could also be, of course, since the sterling declined since the referendum, our euros now go further. So because we've bought more, or sorry, because the sterling <clears throat> is actually worth a lower amount than it was before, that might mean that we've bought more, uh, more actual goods. 
or it could mean uh, it could mean more in terms of value. So that that I don't know. But the point is is that I don't have to know. As an economist, it's not my job to know absolutely every piece of information because I will never ever finish. If you try to find out everything, everything about your project uh, in advance of you submitting your research report, it'll just take too long, right? It just really and truly will take too long. So what we need to know is what we need to know. And if there are things that we don't know, well, then we have to acknowledge that as well. Um, but we have to know that we, we can't do everything. So when, when we go down here, this is the information that I've got, is that the EU accounted for 72 billion of total exports in 2019. And this is an increase of 1.9 billion. Now, 40%, if I don't think we're going to have a bigger, I don't, I don't think we're going to have a bigger, um, a bigger percentage than this. But you may say to me, but Susan, hold on now. Hang on a second here. The EU isn't a country. Correct. However, based on what I have, this is the data that I have to work with. Now, I can go looking for more data, but based on this, I the question that I set out to achieve was, who is our largest exporting country partner? So is that what I'm going to go with and, and mentioning the 48% or will I go further? So then it says exports to non-EU countries and then it goes on to imports and imports. 5.5 billion to, uh, to the EU in December. Now 5.5 billion in December. Let's compare 5.5. No, that was sorry, that was December. The thing is, based on the information I have right here, there's my answer. Aha, there's my answer. The reason that I can't go down any further is, look at this information. Look at this information here. This information looks at the year. This information down here looks at the month. Now, I specifically want the year. So here is my answer. The USA was our largest export destination in 2019, accounting for 46 billion or 31% of our total exports. So the answer is the U. S, and I'm going to put in both the percentage. Oh, the percentage is easier to remember. So in 2019, uh, the answer is the US. So I'm going to say United States, United States, States, States. Okay. Uh, over here, I'm going to say the amount was 46. Again, I'm just going to I'm going to copy all of this. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to take this X. Um, uh, over here, so th this is the amount in million, and um, uh, this is now the proportion of our exports that went to the US uh, was 31%. 31%. Now, I haven't formatted that, let me do that. Okay, it's 31%. And over here, I must format that, which is practically done for me, but all the same. And I'm going to format paint that. And the country is the US. Now, um, you may have heard that the UK or Britain is our largest trading partner. And you may say, well, hold on now. What do you mean our largest trading, trading partner when it comes to this? Well, let's go and see. Because how much did we sell into Britain? Great exports to Britain were 13 billion. You see, this is, I have to say, I'm, I'm always intrigued by this. It's a complete misnomer. Yes, the UK is our largest trading partner, but largest trading partner refers to both exports and imports. However, our largest export partner is actually the US. And look at the, look at the difference, is that we exported 46 billion last year to the US in comparison to Great Britain when we exported 13. Now, um, therefore, about three and a half times for every one euro, that went to, the, went to Great Britain, 350 went to the US. So that is another interesting fact that I might put in yeah, if, if I wanted to. Um, now, let's also see where the growth happened. So it says the EU accounted for 48% and this represented 3% growth. Exports to non-EU countries grew by 14%. Okay, that's not quite telling me what I want though, is it? It's not quite telling me. Um, it's not quite telling me. So actually, this data set isn't complete uh, for what I want. So we're going to have to leave this blank for a little while. Okay, we, we, we come back and we'll, we'll take a look at it. But over here, it's going to be very easy to do this because I have all the information for imports. So when I look here at imports, it tells me 
So first of all, imports, uh, there were 52 billion from the EU in 2019, representing 59%, that's massive. So, and of course, remember the EU uh, at the time in 2019, uh, that the UK was part of that. So imports from non-EU countries, I can see here, total 36 billion, a decrease of minus 4%. And I see here the decrease was minus 3%. And let me go up further. Uh, let me see, how about imports? Imports from Great Britain uh, were 18 billion, an increase of 2% in comparison. So actually, it's quite likely, based on what I'm looking at here, it's quite likely that here was my fastest growing region. But you know what? I'm, I'm, not, happy. I'm not happy with that data set because I, I haven't enough information. And again, I'm doing this intentionally. I'm doing all of this intentionally to point out that you may not always get the, what, what you're looking for immediately. So what, what I know now is that we, I can't quite fill in the rest of this information for a little while, okay? I, I need to go further, and I will, I will. I'm gonna show you where, where to find more information. But let's move on to the third question. And the third question is what are we exporting? Excuse me, and just at, at this point, I just want to say if anybody has any questions, um, please do send them in. I will. I will get to them uh, at, later on when I uh, when I take a look at the the, the comments that, that come in. But if you have any questions at all, please do put them in. Um, I'm more than happy to answer them, of course. But please do uh, put put them in. And uh, and of course, the other thing is, if any of you want to send me in your email, if you want me to email you the uh, the recording with the resources and the link on the blog afterwards, uh, please do. Please do that as well, of course, because that is a very simple way that I can I, I can get the information across to you. All right, so what are we exporting? So what's our lar largest category in terms of amount, and what's our largest category in terms of in terms of change? So in other words, what are we exporting? So I'm going to go back here now to my data set. I'm going to go right back up here to the top, and uh, I can see here goods imports, goods exports. All oh, that's very interesting. However, um. Let's take a look here at this section. So the unadjusted value of goods exports for December 2019 was 11.6 billion, representing a decrease uh, of 223. Now, oh wow, okay. So I think we have our answer here. Exports of electrical machinery, apparatus and appliances increased by 54% in December. Again, we're back to, all of these are December and December. This isn't the type of information that I'm looking for. I want, I'm going to have to go further than that. In fact, it's actually up here. Preliminary figures for 2019 show the goods exports were valued at 152 billion. And I can also see that this is here. Uh, this is an increase of 8% uh, of, we can see that as well. So the largest category of exports was medical and pharmaceutical products. Now, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. Copy over here and paste, okay? So this time, I'm going to say uh, sector or industry. Now they, they're slightly different things, but for the in terms of the leaving cert, they mean broadly the same thing, right? Uh, again, I'm going to copy and paste this down here. I shouldn't have taken country because that isn't the same thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna I'm going to uh, format paint this. Right. So the 33 percent. So for every euro. Right for every euro that is going out in exports out of the country, thirty three cent of that is pharmaceutical. And when we look at where I think nine of the ten largest pharmaceutical companies in the world are based in Ireland, and primarily they're based in Cork, so that's where an awful lot of this comes from. Exports of these goods account for a third of all exports, and that was almost fifty billion. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that an incredible amount of money? So I can see here. Um, there we go. I have my amount. Have my amount here, and that's all okay. Now, can I find the largest category here in terms of change? Because I know they've gone up by seven percent, but I don't really, don't really know any more than that. Um, so it says the largest category. This represents up seven percent in value. Yeah, I just, I just, I just haven't got enough information there. Oh, hold on now. Down here is where I can figure out the next section. And that is what is the largest growth and here we go i can find it here in figure two selected export growth rates so when i look at all of these 
I can see clearly here the greatest growth has been in machinery and transport equipment. So that's the answer to my second question. Machinery and transport. Transport equipment. Equipment. Okay. And the, uh, I, I, the, the growth of this area last year, 18.42%. 18.42%. So you see why I would have been wrong if I had written down the number that uh, that we'd found for pharma. So if we look at medical and pharmaceutical products, they were up 7%. So that wouldn't have been the largest category in terms of change. It, it really wouldn't have been at all. Can I find the amount though? Machinery and transport equipment. Let me, I'm just simply going to go, I'm going to search for this machinery and transport equipment. Okay. Uh, here we go. Imports. There we go. Um, biggest product categories imported in. No, that's not 20. Uh, that's not what we want. Nope. Can't. I don't think I can find the information here. So let me go further. I, I'm going to. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to have to go further than that. Right. So when you, when you take all of this into consideration, then I'm missing the largest country export country in terms of growth. And I'm missing the amount that we actually exported of the machinery and transport equipment. Now, what I had jumped over here was the largest import partner and largest import country. So the reason I did that is I wanted to show you this infographic, an interactive infographic of that. If we scroll on down here, look, look at this. I love, love this, right? Look at what I can do here is that I can see where we're importing in terms of millions and particularly where we're importing a lot, uh, a lot of our goods. So if I was to scroll in, uh, if I was to scroll in here and I was to look around here, where it's really, really blue, where it's really, really blue is where we're export, importing a lot. So, right, 718 um, million there. However, when we go to France, uh, France, we're importing one and a half billion. Germany, 716 million. But when we go to the UK, or specifically Great Britain, and again, that is England, France, oh, sorry, <laughs> England, Wales, and Scotland, you can see that we're importing 1.812 billion. Right. So I'm guessing I'm guessing that Great Britain is our largest import partner. Now, I'm not going to go back up here and search around for this information again, because what I want to do now is now that we've gone through the basics, I want to show you where to find the detail. So down here, I can look at a table of goods, imports and export summary analysis, classified commodity and classified by country. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the country. And as you can see here, now I've got them all right. I have got them all. So here is where it would have been easier to find my information, but this looks a lot more overwhelming. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to scroll down here, look at the imports, and I'm going to look at who did we import the most from in, uh, in January to December 2019. Now I'm guessing, I'm only guessing up here because of the colors, I'm guessing it's the UK. But you see how easy it is to guess here because I can use this interactive, I can use this interactive tool. So as I scroll down here, let's take a look at the UK. United Kingdom is 20.3 billion. Um, now that's the United Kingdom as opposed to Great Britain. Remember the United Kingdom includes Northern Ireland. So let me just see here, right? So we've got 18 billion, but I'm, I'd rather put down the United Kingdom because that would be more accurate. So I'm just gonna put this, of course it is country. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna I think this may be it. Uh, in terms of amount, I'm going to put it in here. Okay, I'm going to put it in there. So let me go back and see 20.3. Is there anywhere that's higher than that? Right, so the Eurozone is higher, but that's a currency block. The EU is higher, of course, which includes the UK. Let me go up there. Is there anywhere else that's close to 20.3 billion? There's 18.6, but that's Great Britain. There's 11 billion, that's France. 7 billion, that's Germany. 1.6 billion, that is Belgium. Let me go outside of the EU, 5 billion into China, 1.1 billion into Japan, 2 billion into Switzerland, 13 billion into the US, but nowhere comes close to this. Now do you understand why people say the UK is our largest trading partner? Is when you add up exports and imports, when you put the two together, that is how you get, that's, that's how you get that figure. So 20.308, okay, there we go. That is of course in euro. There we go. And our country is the United Kingdom. United Kingdom. 
Okay, and uh, do I know what percentage that is? I don't think I can get it from here. No, I don't think it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it up, right? So I'm just going to go back up to our total exports. Total exports completely. Our total exports way up here is uh, 152 billion. So now this is the first time I'm going to introduce a formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say equals, right? So watch, watch my screen up here. Brackets. I'm going to divide this by our total exports. And I can see now that our total, sorry, our total imports, apologies, is 13%. So 13% of all, ah, sure, I got the wrong figure, didn't I? I got the wrong figure. Let me do that again. So equal to our imports divided, imports from the UK, divided by our imports in total is over here. And you can see our, we have 23%, 23% of our imports. Now, you might say, didn't we see that figure already? Yes, we did. But where did we see it? Where we saw it was, I'll go back down here. Uh, I saw, we saw it in the infographic. This was the infographic that I showed you here a while ago. Here it is. See, there it is. This is where we can actually see um, our, uh, our imports. Sorry. Yeah, our imports uh, are 23.8% in comparison to the rest of the world. So, but of course, this is on a different data set. So you would have to link that back uh, to say that here's where you got where you got your source. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because uh, I worked it out myself. Largest import country in terms of growth now. Will we be able to find this? Hmm. Uh, let me see. So if I go back down here and I look at our largest import. Let me scroll on down here. Let me scroll on down here. Does it actually say anything? Remember, we're not going to look at this information because it's only December. Can we find... And we find out about our imports. Do we actually have a change? And it says imports from non-EU countries. When we looked at this and we said, right, minus 4% and minus 8%. So I think the best thing we should do here is again, go back to our raw data. And what we could do here is we could look at the change. So when I look at these figures broadly, let's see which ones went up. So this went down, slightly up down, slightly up, way down, way uh, down, down, slightly up, uh, up quite significantly, actually. Um, okay, there's a contender. This one went up. Um, this one went down. So you can see that this, this could be quite a laborious job. So what I would do here now, I just want to see if we have a fast way of doing this. And one thing that we could do is that we could actually open this in Excel, right? If we, oh no, this is for December 2019. Okay, maybe that's not the best route to go. Um, a simple way to actually do, to do this would be to compare or to compare each one of those, those imports. So I don't quite see the information here. Right, let's Google it then. So, and that would be, now, by the way, I have done all of this already. The way in which I am going through this process is the very, very same way as I would if I hadn't looked through this already. So I'm just trying to take you through the tips and tricks about how to actually conduct th th this research in a, in a cohesive way. So what I'm going to ask you is, how, uh, which country increased its exports to Ireland the most last year. Now, if I ask this question, I'm unlikely to find the answer. And that is because it's very, very hard when you structure it this way. Google does, does know what, what, what you're actually saying. So instead, a better way to go would be Ireland's import data 2019. You see, keywords matter. It really, really, really matters. Now, as I scroll down here, I'm actually being looped back, right back to where I started. So therefore, there actually isn't there actually isn't a quick way of doing this. So as a result of that, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to figure all of this information out uh, myself uh, around wh who, where do we grow our imports from most. So for the sake of brevity tonight, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in the UK. Um, 
because let me go down here to Great Britain. Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to put put this figure in for the sake of brevity. I'm gonna gonna put this in, and I will work all of that out, and I will put the Excel spreadsheet. I'm gonna embed it into the blog post so that you can see. But the point is, is that I wanted to take you. If you want to find out information, you may have to dig deeper. You may not find the information that you want. If you Google it, it may be easily found. But then the last thing is, if that's not the case, you simply have to go the hard way. Okay, so for the sake of brevity, that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in here, uh, uh, 2% is, so is the growth. So 2% is the growth. And of course, same thing happens here. 2% is the growth. How much um, was the change in exports? 383 million. Okay, so 383 million. Now, um, yeah, that's fine. And largest import country in terms of growth. Again, I'm going to say United Kingdom here. Okay. Now, as we as we approach the as we, we come towards the, the end of our webinar or the end of our Facebook Live, you can see now we've we've answered quite a significant amount of, of what, what we wanted, which is that we can see here we now know that exports are have increased, we now know that imports have decreased, we know that our surplus, and by the way, surplus, let me put it over here in my vocabulary. I'm gonna move this back over here. Okay. Uh, so surplus, surplus means that our exports are greater than our imports. Okay, so I can see that I have my terminology over here. So I can see that our largest uh, export partner uh, is thirty one percent to the UK, or sorry to the US, and I haven't quite figured out yet which is our largest export country in terms of growth. Where did our growth? actually come from last year I, I didn't quite quite figure figure that out um so i'm gonna have to do the same down here is that i'm gonna have to figure out okay well when i compare this data set to this data set which one actually grew the most where was our fastest growing growing partner and again i'm going to be putting that in into our uh, into the excel spreadsheet uh, so that you can you can find that out but the point is again you won't always find what you what you want and that's the whole purpose of research is, is that you're able to, to figure that out along the way. Now, very, very, very same thing applies to services, right? The very, very same thing applies to services. Rather than take it to exactly the same thing, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this, uh, I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to show you where to find that. So if I go to CSO.ie, and then I go down here to statistics. It doesn't jump out at you like the, like the goods exports and imports doesn't jump out of you there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly where to find it. And that is uh, in under external trade. And then after that, it is down here in international trade and services. And you would just do the very same. You would just do the very, very same. Um, all you would basically go through the data set. So I'm now, interesting point here. Uh, and this is a point that I wanted to make sure that I, that I got to tonight. And that is that you will not always find the most recent, or sorry, you'll always find the most recent data, but it may not be as recent as you might like it to be. So that's why in the case of international trade and services, uh, we are looking at, let me scroll down here. See, I can do the same thing. I can say, right, have my uh, international trade and services, have they increased? or have they decreased? Have they, how have they changed? And I can also go through where, and I can go down to why, and by the way, I will do all of that in the blog post for you tonight, so that you will have all of that information. But again, the purpose of tonight is to show you how to actually go about finding all of that information. Again, you have the interactive graphics here. So we have all of what we need, and if we don't have it, scroll down here, and I can look, for example, into exports and imports of services, classified by geographic location and then when i come down here i can look into both the sector up here at the top and uh, the country over here now that can be quite intimidating that information can look like whoa there's a lot there that's that's completely fine that's completely normal but that is what we together you your teachers and me we that is what we will help you through right throughout as you are working on your research project and that is what i'm going to be working on during each of these uh, Facebook Lives as well. Now, I also want to mention that there are two types of research. One is primary, one is secondary. What I've gone through